Hello, we're going to talk about the differences between exothermic and endothermic. Sometimes students are challenged by identifying if a reaction or a system releases energy or gains energy. So I want to talk this out and give a couple of examples that hopefully you can make it make sense in your head. Um, so the two important words that we have to begin with are system, and this is the reaction or the process that we define. It's going to be, what am I going to study? You're saying, what am I focusing on? Um, what's the reaction that I am looking at? You pick that, and you're going to see me do that with these examples here. Now, the surrounding, I wish I had that really great low Morgan Freeman voice where I could say, it's the universe surrounding the system. So you define what you're studying and everything else around that, the universe around that, that's called the surrounding. Um, so we're going to focus on the system. We want to know is the system exothermic or endothermic? Now exothermic, I think is the word exit, E-X, exothermic exit. Um, it means releasing energy. The system gives energy to the surrounding. Um, endothermic, I think of enter, um, E-N, endothermic, E-N, enter. Um, that's absorbing energy. So the system is taking energy from the surrounding and putting it inside itself. Now, some examples. Let's start with phase changes. And I think phase changes are sometimes anti-intuitive. This is honestly what I do. I become the phase. I pretend that I am the system. So let's go in this direction. We're going from like a solid to a liquid. So become the solid. <laughs> I'm going to be the ice cube, okay? And you know the ice cubes are cold. And so that solid is going to go um, from that fixed state to the liquid state, all right? So I'm thinking temperature, what happens to my energy if I'm the solid to go from a solid to liquid? Well, I have to warm up. How do I warm up? I absorb energy. I take in energy. So to go from a solid to a liquid is endothermic put energy into it to force that solid to change phase to a liquid. Same thing with a liquid, going to a gas. So let's say I'm the liquid, be the liquid. I'm not joking, I literally think this way to make it make sense. So I'm the liquid, what happens to me to go to a gas? All right, I've got to warm up. My I need to input energy so I can get hot enough to separate intermolecular forces and become a gas. So if I'm the liquid, I've got to absorb energy, get hot to become the gas. So again, that is going to be endothermic. So let's write that down. When we're going in this direction, solid to liquid to gas, and this would also be the same for um, a sublimation, solid to gas. This is going to be your endothermic. And remember, endothermic gets that positive sign. Um, and that's just a convention that we've come up with. This is not like a number line. It's just code for, hey, endothermic, you put a positive in front of that number. Okay, now let's go in the reverse direction gas to liquid to solid. So again, be the system. Okay, so a substance is going to go from gas to liquid and we have to write down, is that endothermic or exothermic? So be the gas. Okay, I'm the gas, hot, lots of energy. To become a liquid, all right, condensed, it has to cool down. Well, how can I cool down? I've got to give away my energy. So give away my energy, that means it's exothermic. This is the most anti-intuitive, it's liquid to solid, but if you become the system, it'll make sense. Okay, so liquid to solid, here I am a liquid, be the system, I'm the liquid, and I've got to freeze and become a solid. So what happens to me, the system, the liquid, to become the solid? Well, I've got to get rid of my energy. When a liquid freezes to a solid, that is exothermic. It gives away energy. Now, why this is hard is students go, now, wait a second, but it got colder. It got colder. Does that mean that um, it would be endothermic? You have to think about the system. The system has to cool down in order for that liquid to become a cold solid. The liquid has to give away its energy, give away, release, exit. That is exothermic. So become the system and you can think your way through it, okay? What happens to the system? Does it have to warm up, endothermic, or does it have to cool down, give away, exothermic? So this is going to be your exothermic and our convention, you'll recall, is a negative. And again, when we're doing numbers, um, that's not a number line. I'm not thinking um, like negative down here on a number line to the left. It's just code for, hey, that means that that system releases energy. Okay, now let's put this into some chemical reactions. Let's say that we have some ionic salt. I'm going to have a cup of water, and I'm gonna put that ionic salt in the water. The temperature goes down. Let's say that we start at 20 degrees, 
and it goes down to 18 degrees. Um, are you thinking, is that endothermic or exothermic? Well, that's really vague. We have to first define the system. Your system is going to be the reaction. You're thinking about the reaction, okay? Um, so when you're doing chemical reactions, you define your system as the reaction. So I want you to imagine that you could get inside that cup, all right? Um, there's a reaction that happens. The reactants break, the products form, atoms rearrange, okay? So this reaction happens. The surrounding is going to be the liquid. Now the surrounding, that water, its temperature went down. So if the water's temperature decreased, that means it had to give away its energy. It lost energy. It gave away energy. Well, where did that energy go? It went into the reaction. The reaction right here, so this is going to be the reaction would be your endothermic in order for that reaction to happen, for the reactants to break, bonds to form. For that reaction to happen, it required energy. Where did it get the energy? It robbed it and took it out of the water. So the water gave away its energy, and that was the exothermic part. What's the evidence for this? That the temperature of that solution dropped. That water started at 20 degrees, you put the salt in, it went down to 18. It lost energy. It gave away energy, and that energy had to go into the system, which was the reaction. In order to force that reaction, um, to break those bonds, and for the water to surround it, the reaction to happen, it required energy. Okay, so you really have to think through it and define your system. When you're defining systems for chemical reactions, always make the reaction itself your system. And then everything else this will be the surrounding, like the water was the surrounding. Okay, let's do another one. Um, let's say that you have this chemical reaction, and I just made it generic, that we're going to have reactants um, X plus Y are going to produce C. So we have this synthesis reaction, um, and it gives us a negative delta H. That means it's exothermic. So just a real quick first blush, you say, oh, that reaction releases energy. Digging deeper into this, you know it always takes energy to break reactants, and it releases energy when products are formed. So if we have a net exothermic, it means more energy was released when products were formed than the energy that was required to break the reactants. So um, this energy here for the delta H to break the reactants must have been less than the energy to form that was released when those were formed, um, when those products were formed. Um, so it tells us that the net overall reaction is going to be a negative. There's extra energy, if you will, that can be released. So that's what exothermic means. Will it take energy to do this reaction? Always. But when the energy was released, when those products were formed, there was more energy released than was um, required. And so you get that negative delta H. Okay, um, let's see here. Next, I want to give you some contextualized, some life examples, because you'll see these types of questions on tests as well. Um, so here's a good one. Water on your skin. Say it's a beautiful summer day, you go swimming, it's hot outside, and yet when you get out of the pool with all these droplets of water on your skin, you're cold. Why is that? It's called evaporative cooling, but really, it's just this idea of endothermic and exothermic. Here's what happens. You have that water droplet on your skin. The water droplet is absorbing energy from your skin, and when it absorbs the energy, okay, so absorbing energy, the water droplet is endothermic. So what's your skin? Your skin is giving away energy to the water droplet. So your skin is the exothermic. Let me write that down. The skin is the exothermic. Your skin gives away energy to the water. The water is the endothermic, and it makes the water evaporate off of your skin. Uh, because it warms up the water and so the water will evaporate. Now, why is it that you and I feel cold when we have those water droplets on our skin? It's because it's pulling energy out of our body and so it gives us that sensation of being cold, evaporative cooling. That's how swamp coolers work. Um, okay, now farmers and freezing. Um, so let's say that we have a great big field of tomatoes and the first freeze is coming and we have lots of tomatoes we don't want them to freeze so here's a trick that the farmers will use they'll take all of the um, furrows in between the rows and they'll flood them with water so they're full of water nighttime comes and the temperature gets really really low 
what happens is the water will freeze. Now come back here, going from a liquid to a solid. In order for that water to freeze, it has to give away its energy to become a solid, to cool down. So the water in the furrows, they freeze. They're exothermic. As they freeze, as they go from liquid to a solid, they give away their energy, and guess what? The tomato plants absorb that energy and the tomato plants won't freeze. The tomato plants are going to be the exothermic, absorbing the energy, um, or excuse me, the endothermic, they absorb the energy from the water that froze and it was the exothermic. So the water gave away its energy as it froze, and then the plants absorb that energy endothermic, and the tomatoes won't freeze. You can only use that trick right at the beginning of, of fall when, when the temperature starts to, to drop. So there are some examples for you on endothermic versus exothermic, and hopefully giving you some um, practice with how you apply this, chemical reactions, phase changes, and then some examples in life. Good luck, have a really good day, thanks.